Hey everyone. Let's get rocking and rolling because uh, it is doomsday out there now. Kidding about the doomsday, but beware. Um, El Presidente is uh, speaking here at 9 a.m. So he will be on actually right now. Funny enough. Am I watching it? Heck no. I think we got Jack coming on, government bailout. Yep. Don't call it a bailout, though. You can't call it a bailout. Come on now. Hey. You'll, you'll get in trouble. Jack. Hey, you got to set me up so my video will work. Yeah, that's, you know, you know, you know, I don't control any of that stuff. Where's Come Adam? On. There he is. You, you know how uh you know how it is Jack. The whole, yeah. the whole team does all that good stuff all right i'm gonna grab my screen here i don't know what i did with the zoom how you doing jack? Lance? well jack let me first i waited okay and i apologize it's kind of gloomy out here it is i waited how long two three weeks and last night i was very tempted to yeah. smoke this but I waited for you. Good. So we're going to heat the outside and let's give it a try. So this is uh, Arturo Fuente. 858 Maduro. That's it. I took it out the package. I've been chewing on it. Can yeah. Nice. No. I got a longer version this morning. I'm going to need a longer breakfast cigar because in all fair warning, I got my two grandkids here. We rented a house in Tampa for Little Jack's birthday. Oh, nice. And uh, Dunedin area? Uh, Tampa. Oh. Yeah. I'm in Tampa. Uh, next, he lives in Dunedin, and, and my wife rented this house. And my son, Jack, he had his birthday on the 12th, and today's little Jack's birthday. And my granddaughter's here, and it's full of chaos. So if they come barging in, that, that's what it's going to be. It's gonna well, Jack, be I haven't even had breakfast yet. You know what my breakfast is? Breakfast cigar, baby. Nothing better. I had an espresso at like 5 a.m., went to the gym. I got some OJ, nice. like, a real, like a real Florida man. And Jack, you live in what, Naples? Yeah. Yeah. So but I Jack like I like Tampa, but I got to stay in Naples. My wife's family is down there and she calls the shots on that thing. So uh, I get to see little Jack all the time. He's only two hours away and it's just a good time. All right, Jack, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull up the uh, the futures here to give everyone a preview. So does ever does uh let, let's explain what happened overnight. How about we do that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so basically, if, if if everyone was watching, and I know this crowd loves the uh, Academy Awards, so I'm sure everyone here was like Bill Ackman watching the Academy Awards show. But uh, so last night, futures open 6 a.m. So what we're looking at is the S&P futures here. Futures rallied massively. S&P was up about 70 points because everyone see the screen right here. S&P futures were up about 70 points. I'll just, just do a, a 30 minute chart here. 30 minute chart here. We were up about 70 points because uh, Janet Yellen came in Sunday morning saying there's no bailout. There's, you know, everything's fine. And then Sunday night, they say, hey, everything's fine. We're bailing out. We're basically putting in a backstop to uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Everyone who has accounts will get paid. Everything, even over a quarter million dollars, 250K will be insured. People can meet payroll. Everything's champagne and roses. Well, come this morning, here we are down 42 points. So we've seen about a 100-point reversal in the S&P futures uh, right now. Now, why would you say that is? Well, I think people realize that, not people, because you got to figure, the Sunday night future session is very, very low volume. Mm -hmm. I think people woke up to... Uh, to the news like, hey, there's still a lot of trouble in these banks. Basically, mm -hmm. they try to cover up the headline saying everything's fine. When people woke up this morning or when, you know, there's some volume in the market, they said, look, this is this is BS. But what's key is 
they already sold the market off already. I think a lot of people thought we were going to open green and then fade yeah. as the U.S. Uh, market hours opened up. Yep. So that, that's key. What uh, what are your thoughts on this whole banking uh, cover-up fiasco, we'll say? First of all, that uh, bank that failed was a very poorly run bank. Probably a uh, 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 kid 12 years old could have run that bank. And the way they did it was when people put money in the bank, they went out and bought bonds to, you know, because they couldn't relend that money. And then as bond rates went higher, the value of the bonds they had went lower. And when they ch started to sell those off to, to make uh, withdrawals, it was an ugly ending. But, you know, Everybody in the banking community that runs all that, Janet Yellen, all these other guys, they, they need to have more oversight of what's happening because that bank ain't the only bank in that position. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more banks in that position and people hate banks and people don't trust banks. And all they need is a little tiny bit of a fear to start a whole nother run. And I think they got to do more to to calm the fears and, and explain why that bank failed and why it may not happen to another bank. But, you know, they're not clear about it. And uh, Janet Yellen, I just have trouble. I can't concentrate on what that old man is saying because it just looks to me like he cuts his own hair and I just, I can't listen to the guy. Are, are, are you calling Janet Yellen a man? Oh, I thought that's what it was. Are you telling me? Woo. All right, I got some homework to do, but I'm not sure. You called call Goldilocks. Uh, Jack, you might get canceled. You might get canceled <laughs> over here already. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, call, calling Goldilocks the man. She said, we'll never see another financial crisis. She said the banks are fine. Yeah. Well, she cuts her own hair too. So that's what I'm saying. I can't concentrate on what she's saying because just, oh my God, we got to get better people in here, you know? Well, you, you have to think though. This is what I always tell people. If you really want to be a government uh, servant, right, you know, put your life in government, if you have to be a little bit crazy to do that, because if you were really that smart and really that uh, business savvy, wouldn't you just run your own company yeah. and make millions upon millions of dollars, not wait for a government check or not, not work 40 years to get a pension, yeah. you know? And the only and the only reason it, it, everyone else gets no more pensions anymore, we saw GM buy out uh, their employees. The only people whose pensions are secure are the government people, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing that in the chat. You know, Skip says, put your money in CDs, 5%. Money markets, 5%. We, me and Jeff have been saying this. There's no real reason to get into risky stocks when you could get 5% of your money in the bank on a money market or a CD right now. You know what's crazy? The the 17 week, you got to think about this. The 17 week T-bill is almost at 5.2. Yep. 17 week. And then you got the one year, it's, I don't even think it's, it's around three. I mean, it's just like everything that we looked at and counted on in the past, it looks broken to me. You know, everything, e the, the, everything looks broken. Everything looks broken. The data we're getting, it's not the same. You know, the CPI, the PPI, the FBI, you never know what's what how they're coming and, up with these data, you know? And and by the way, everyone, look what we're happening, look what's happening tomorrow. So I like going on a uh, econo day just for my uh uh for my ca economic calendar. If you think today's volatile, you got CPI tomorrow, 8 30 a.m. So beware, if you think the market is volatile today, just wait. Again, this move is just off the banks strictly, right? The NASDAQ was holding up pretty good. To be, to be fair, and I know this is something myself, Jeff, we've been harping on, the NASDAQ stocks, obviously not, not having a lot of correlation with the banks. Yeah, there were some stocks like Roku, Billy Billy, um, with a lot of money in S, uh, Silicon Valley Bank. But the NASDAQ, even even last night was up almost two percent. Now it's only down half a percent compared to let's say you know the Dow, which is uh, Dow futures are down two fifty five, uh, S and P futures down uh, nearly one percent or so. So 
the uh, uh, I think the play going forward, if you want to get long, maybe you look at some NASDAQ uncorrelated stocks to the banks, but everything else, usually when you have one bank, uh, like you mentioned earlier, there's more, uh, there's never just one cockroach. Nope. Not just one. And, so and we, not to change the subject, but you remember that Roblox trade we were talking about? Oh, well, hold on, hold on, Jack. You got to, so everyone here, to give you a little uh, uh, background story, let me, let me set you up for this Roblox, okay? Me and Jack were in Jacksonville, right? Uh, we were together there a few days. And, you know, we don't work, to give you a background, Jack's in Naples, I'm in Tampa. We hardly ever go to Jacksonville, right? You know, we, we don't like sit in a room with everyone else and stuff. We're independent traders, right? Sure. So I'm with Jack. Roblox has a big earnings gap up right here, right? Remember that day they had earnings squeeze? Yeah. I go to Jack in the afternoon. He goes, I just bought some puts on Roblox. And I go, oh, wow, this is very contrarian. You know, I thought Jack did more conservative stuff. Mm -hmm. I go, what puts did you buy? He goes, the weeklies that expired tomorrow. <laughs> so ever since then, I was like, Jack, you're my kind of guy. But go ahead, hey, go ahead about Roblox. Look, look at this chart though. Like, okay, so I bought the 4450 put. And as a former NASDAQ market maker, I can tell you when you see a gap like you have right there, Good news can make a stock go up, but it can't make it stay up, right? right? So that was my bet on that. But since that happened, and this is a strategy I want to tell you, Lance, because this is perfect for you. So I did it on CRM, right? Maybe you pull up CRM. Yeah, they just had that, that, huge, like uh, that huge move on earnings. I think this is one of the biggest scams out there. So again, it popped up to 190. I bought the 190 put, like an at the money put on a gap up, and then just go fishing, mess around. Next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. So this strategy of, you know, hitting these gap ups and buying a put at the money, what looks like at the top, it's going to go down. And I'll just tell you, like, as a former NASDAQ market maker, when good news came in, the brokers would bring in an order before the market opened and it wouldn't be on a limit. It would be an order to buy at the market, however many shares was on the ticket. Right. So as a NASDAQ market maker, you're going to gap this thing up, fill all those orders. And then when everyone, and then, and then you got the short covering guys as well. And then you got the greedy guys that just can't wait. But once all that buying is out, it's got nowhere to go but down. And yeah, I got a, a perfect example is a lot of those growth stocks, they had a big gap up when the market rallied, and then they filled that gap quickly to the downside. I mean, they quickly filled the gap right, right. down lower. Look look at all these gap fills in stocks. You, know, you, you, could, you could find uh, Shopify, another one, right? Breakout, gap fill. Disney, big earnings gap up, fill. Everything got faded. So do you get anything today? Do you look at it? Do you look at like I'm I don't have my normal setup because I'm in this rented house, but do you see anything gapping up? Like I like to look for something gapping that's up? gapping oh. up before the market yeah. opens, like 20%, something ridiculous on earnings. And it has to be a higher price stock. You know, some of the stuff that's at four or five or less than 10 bucks, it could have a big gap up, but it won't. You don't get the big fallout after that. And like dinosaur skip saying here, I avoid buyouts because. If the news is buyout, the stock's not going to come down. It has to yeah, be. Yeah, and, and the options go so wide, you can't yeah, trade. Yeah, you go crazy. You can't make anything on a buyout. But on an, it's an overreaction is what it is. And I like to react to an overreaction. That's the simplest way I could say it. But this would be a good strategy for you, Lance, because you're up and on it early. Just look for these gap ups and you see one's up 20, 20 something percent on a high price stock that's got a lot of psychological drop. Boom. I don't think uh, I don't think we're getting a lot of gap ups today. Uh, maybe you know some biotech names I saw, but you know usually the biotech I don't usually that's uh, news specific on a drug or something. Yeah, um, but I mean we really don't. Besides you know prevention bio, there's no liquidity. C Gen, there's no liquidity in these options. No. Really, the only thing gapping up today 
is uh, the gold stocks. The gold and silver stocks are getting a huge move to the upside because, well, uh, banks look so much gear in the financial system, right? So people are seeking, you know, if you look at like gold futures, gold futures just went from 1820 to 1900 plus now. So, I mean, I, I can't stand in front of gold and short gold, though. I, I think gold is, uh, especially in a time like right now, I think gold's too bullish to, to, you know, to sell the gap. I hate gold. It, it's, it's, it's a big moving contract, uh, or silver, even bigger. Uh, hey, how are you? Good, good. But I do like the metals here because uh, uh, obviously what's happening in the banks, especially the regional banks. Yeah. I mean, look, look at this move in KRE, the regional bank ETF. Yeah. Look at this move. I yeah, mean, that is. Is, that is doomsday if I've ever seen it. Now, I'm not a big proponent of buying stuff that gaps down. I used to do Either. that, but I don't do that anymore. I'm just more on the gap upside. And well, it's so much easier because when you're a market maker, you can do the actual stock. You can do it in the pre-market, this and that. You can short and buy thousands and thousands of shares as long as you're flat by the end of the day. But I'm not a NASDAQ market maker. I'm only managing my own money. So it's much easier just to buy a put option than it is to short or try to short a thousand shares. That's impossible when, when things are fast moving. But you, anybody can buy an active money put. It's a piece of cake. You can get into these for less than a thousand dollars. And you know, when it works, it works really great. And when it doesn't work, you just sell it. Hey, Jack, what up? We wow, look at this volatility, by the way. If you look at KRE, and, and this is and everyone here, just beware, even though you're seeing these crazy moves in stocks. What I want to do is show you guys just how volatile. So, you know, me and Jack mostly trade options, right? But normally, if you would see, let's say, like a three, four, four, five percent move in a stock, especially like some of these bank stocks like KRE or XLF, that would be huge. You know, you buy a put, the bank stock's down 2%, your put's up 100%, right? Let's say normal. Now, the market makers are implying such massive moves in the banks. Look at this volatility in KRE. It's yeah. more than tripled over the past two days. So yeah. the price of the put options, or even like XLF, right? Yeah. It's up nearly three times. Look at so that. the price of the options, puts and calls, like KRE, is exp they're implying a, nearly a 10% move this week. Yes, the stock's down about four bucks pre-market, five bucks. But even the 45 puts are 60 cents, or they were yesterday. And XLF, you know, you're getting uh, about an 8% implied move. So the options are taking into consideration just how volatile the market is. Yep. So remember that when you're trading the options, if a stock's normally moving 1% to 2%, and now you see it move 4 or 5%, the options are taking account for that. So you yep. really, if you're using stop losses, widen them, right? Uh, but also too, you know, if you're going to come in and put, you know, real money on the line, scale down that size because volatility is just exploding. Yeah. Okay? I see one guy in the comments talking about, you know, Jack does credit spreads. I do that with bigger money. So just to like to explain to you guys something where I have a really super high probability, I'm going to put more capital into that. Something yep. whenever I buy a put or buy a call, I'm willing to lose 100% of the money I put into that trade. So I'm going to allocate maybe one to 2% or most 5% compared to what I normally would allocate. And even though I'm willing to lose 100% if I buy a put or a call, I'm going to use kind of like what I call a mental stop because I don't like to put a real stop in on the options market. So if it's clearly not going to work my way, I don't mind losing a few shekels. I'll I'll cut it at a 20 to 50% loss, but I never put in more than I can afford to lose into the trade. And I think if you do that, you're, you're going to feel a lot better about how you allocate your capital to trades. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, uh, when you do high probability trades, you can put, like, let's say, for example, I go into uh, JP Morgan, right? Because volatility is going to be sky high, right? Look at volatility, how sky high it is. And let's say I want to, uh, sell, let's say, a bear call spread in J.P. Morgan, right? Let's say uh, J.P. Morgan's down about a dollar fifty pre-market. Actually, let's let's use a 
Bank of America as an example, better example here. Let's say Bank of America. If I want to put on, let's say, uh, and Bank of America is down about a buck, a little over a buck. If I want to do like a bear call spread in Bank of America, let's say the 30, 31, right? I get a dollar for the March 30 calls. And then I'm going to buy the 31 calls for about 50 cents. So I'm going to get about 50 cents on my money. So risk 50 bucks to make 50 bucks. That's actually really, really nice right now, right? As long as the stock doesn't rally over 30 and a half. Now, the other way to look at that is I like to look at the difference in strike prices. These are a dollar, right? So if you use a two dollar, are you using a dollar difference or two dollar difference in strikes here? I usually like using a dollar just because it's easy math. So if you got a quarter, that's 25%. That's, that's not bad at all. I, all right. Jack, I could probably do the 31s, sell the 31s, and buy the 32s. Yeah. And I could probably get a quarter, I would assume. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Exactly a quarter. Yeah, that's that's insane. For for March 23rd, how far away is that? Which, it's no, March 17th. Oh, my God. That's insanity. That, you know why? Because ball... Let me, let me do it here. The 31s sell it's crazy. by the 32s. I'm basically getting 25 cents for the for the uh, bear call spread. That's in right now, right? The issue is, let's say it rallies over 32. I lose 75 bucks. Out or, of my uh, or you could cover your short leg and stay long your long leg. Yep. And it really rips through it. I've made, I, I took what would have been a loss on a credit spread and had some of the biggest gains I ever had by staying along that long leg in the unlikely event the stock rips through your strikes. Right. When, when volatility is high, and usually I only trade directional, but when volatility is high, you can really get uh, some, crazy, some crazy credits for selling options. But... Yeah. Historically, though, we've had such low volatility, you know, the VIX has been 20 or below where you really haven't. So actually buying calls or buying puts has been uh, uh, more more favorable. Yeah. I've still been a big seller. I've been selling like last week. I sold the 98 Amazon call and bought the 99 Amazon call. And I put that on on Tuesday for Friday's expiration. Oh, God. I just can't believe how far out of the money I can get on Amazon and still make a few shekels. Like, I think that was a nine, nine percent trade last week. Uh, yeah. Selling the selling the 98 call, buying the 99 call for last Friday's expiration and making nine percent in three days. Now that's I love that. That's that's my game right there. That, that, that's fantastic. So we have some people in the chat asking about Schwab. Schwab gapping down massively pre-market. Gank all these banks, okay? There has been no, the stock was 44 bucks, now 55 bucks. A, volatility is super high, but you got to also understand these names are moving crazy. So it's not like, oh man, I wish I would have bought a put or all that stuff. You're going to continue to see these wild moves, but just know the options market, like Schwab, look at this right here. Schwab is implying an $8 move. Just for this week, eight dollars. That's insane. Eight over eight dollars, actually. The 50 puts are a buck 25. That was Friday. Now, do you think people think that there's going to be a run on Schwab like there was? I I, I I wouldn't be shocked. I I, I I honestly, I mean, I'll give you an example. Like uh, I saw the SoFi getting crushed and all these uh, little old banks. I'm about to make a bank run myself. I'm about to go to the bank and get a lot of money out. I don't care. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not taking chances. Just try. You know, I had a business in Colorado, and at one point I had to get 10 grand out of that bank or 14 grand, whatever. It took me a half an hour, and I had to threaten to call the cops on them wow. in, in Denver. No shit. You, you can't get your money out of a bank and just go try to take 50 grand cash and deposit it. They don't want to take it. No. Nope. They just want to charge you fees. You can't even get ten, your own 10 grand out of the bank. And she's giving me this line, oh, we only keep so much on hand, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the kind of exact same thing that makes people scared of banks when they give you this bullshit answer. When you go in and try to get your own money out, they act like it's their money. So having a run on a bank is almost impossible. And listening to Mark Cuban and all of his buddies, they had, you know, 50 million, 100 million in that yeah, bank. All that. Anyway, you know. 
But he, even the stocks, like a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, Roku's got uh, 26% of their cash tied up in, uh, in the bank. Well, you would think Roku would, and all these stocks would get crushed this morning, right? But they're barely even down. Like the Rokus, the Billy Billies, everyone thought these companies were going to get screwed, but the Fed, or uh, Bill, not Billy Billy, but the Fed came out and basically, uh, and basically said, hey, you know, we're, we're going to back you guys. We're going to, we're going to uh, give a backstop and everyone's going to be fine. I mean, I even had one of my payroll companies, uh, one of the companies that I do payroll through, they were clients of S, uh, Silicon Valley Bank. And I got an email this morning say, hey, payroll is going to be delayed. You know, that's the issue right there is they may save this bank, but anybody that any corporation that uses that bank, I can guarantee you they are not going to make payroll this week. They are not. I'm not. I'm not. I got it. I got it. They said, hey, give us a call or wait like five days and hopefully uh, payroll goes through. So here I am wondering, damn, what am I supposed to do? You know, thankfully, it's not a lot of money. But at the same time, if I if I had, let's say, like 100 employees and I had to tell them they're not getting paid. That's crazy that that, you know, that's we 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 always talk about, you know, the rich, uh, the the rich uh, folks out there, you know, g getting it, uh, being protected and, and being elite and stuff like that. And I get this, you know, should the banks get bailed out and should, you know, everyone suffer? I mean, part of me says yes. But you also have to understand is the people who are affected are the are the workers, you know, the 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 tellers, the kid who's 22 years old who just started a job, when they're not getting paid and they got, you know, they got to pay rent, they got to pay food and stuff like that, then it really starts to trickle down and cause, you know, A, un obviously unemployment, but also two, these people can't pay bills. That's what really hurts the economy. When you have hundreds of thousands of employees that are taking the hit off bad management, um, uh, off bad man management of these banks, like the Silicon Valley Bank CFO used to work at Lehman Brothers. I mean, it, if you really want to to realize just how bad and and uh, how how corrupt these banks were, I mean, they were crooks to begin with and bad managers and selling millions in stocks. It just, you know, it's just very sad that they're going to be okay, but yet the people who have to pay rent, you know, yeah. or pay their bills in the next couple of weeks aren't going to get paid. That's and where the landlord, it's and the landlord suffers, right? And then they can't make their car payment. Then their credit takes a hit. And yeah. it's just, it's a bad thing. But the other thing is, you know, people don't know how many other banks are in this same position. Because they're so good at hiding their problems, you know. But yep. they, this can't be the only bank, is what people are thinking. So I, I think we'll see a lot of fear. But again, trying to go in and can't get it out, you know. I see people on here saying, "Well, if you make an appointment with your bank to get your money out, it's no problem." <laughs> Who what? That's not a bank run making an appointment. I ain't making no appointment. I want going to drive up and get the money out. I don't want to make an appointment to get it out. They still wouldn't give me all of mine. So you know what am I going to do? I got to just my there. money. I want it now. But uh, <laughs> but Jack, I got to run. I thought I had someone on the team send out the wiretap uh, free market game plan, but apparently no one did. So I got I got some trades on. I got to I got to uh, watch this morning. Um, Jack, do you have anything upcoming uh, before before we wrap up? I got a um, I got another presentation I'm going to give on my favorite strategy today at ten o'clock. So hopefully everybody on here will get a link to that. I'm going to go live live on that okay. at half an hour. So yeah. And what what kind of strategy is it? Just to, uh, it's, uh, my my three day cash machine. It's where exactly what I did with Amazon, where I'm selling one option bringing in that money and then I'm spending less money buying a, a further out of the money option. And the difference is my profit. So are you, so are good. you really doing a bear call spreads or are you doing bull bear calls right now? So the beautiful thing about this strategy is that it's what I call market driven. And so instead of just trying to jam a, a strategy into the market, I first look at his, uh, the market conditions, bullish or bearish, and then I'll go with a bear call if it's bearish or a bull put if it's bullish. But since these weeklies came out, you know, this oh, is yeah. like 2011. I've been doing it every single week since then. And, and it's just been awesome. 
And Ruth, I think they'll drop a link into you. You may see one in your email. Um, but uh, yeah, Rudy, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay in there hot and heavy on those on those options contract. I got one guy that's doing this with me, and he does about a thousand to two thousand contracts every time. What? Never mind. Yeah, he'll spend three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars on one credit spread. In the weeklies? He puts it on for Tuesdays for Friday's expiration. It blows my mind. He sends me his, his uh, uh, you know, his, a snapshot of his account and stuff like this. And, you know, it just, it just kills me how much people are making. And no one really sees this because the options market is kind of like a shadow market. You know, people are seeing the stock market. It's only guys like you and what you're teaching people is where they can look into that side market, which is the option market you know, which is really where I, if it was last year was the hardest market I ever traded in my life. And if it wasn't for options, I don't even know if I'd be still be in the game. I mean, oh, it, you can't, you can't just trade stock. There's no way. You possible. All right, man, I'm going to let you go. Get your stuff set up. It was great being on here with you, Lance. Love seeing you. And uh, yeah, awesome, Jack. I got, uh, I got, I got my screens over here. So uh, we're going to wrap up everyone. Adios. Beware, volatility is insane. So scale down position sizes. Um, it is uh, it is uh, blood in the streets out there. So, yeah. uh, you know, use proper risk management. All right, I'm out. Thanks, I'm Jack. Out. Put it on, dog. See you.